if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or there would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality, and I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away. Take a look at this while you were sleeping shocking video today out of Baltimore. This is all that is left of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, one of the main traffic routes through the city. And it was hit by a container ship. You can see how that collision caused that bridge to snap in several places. Look at that there, plunging to the river below in just a matter of seconds. Now, what we know here is that construction workers were on the bridge at the time of the collision. Emergency responders say that they are searching for at least six people. NBC's Ryan Nobles has the latest. The search and rescue efforts continue here at the site of the bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after a container ship, a thousand foot container ship, collided with the base of the bridge, collapsing the bridge in just a matter of seconds. And since that moment at 1.30 in the morning, rescue crews have been frantically searching uh, for a group of construction workers that fell into the water as the bridge collapsed. At this point, rescue workers believe that they are searching for six people. They did rescue two people from the icy waters. One of them sent to the hospital. The other uh, is okay. At this point, uh, the investigators believe that this was a terrible accident, that something went wrong with the container ship. And they say that the crew on board the ship actually signaled back to the shore that they were having a problem. And that allowed them to stop vehicular traffic over the bridge. And they believe at this point that there are no cars or vehicles of any kind that actually fell into the water. And that meaning that there aren't survivors trapped in cars underneath the river water. Now, all right, guys, so we got to talk about the viral news story that came out this morning about the Baltimore Bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing overnight after a cargo ship ran into the bridge. OK, now I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this video. This is a viral video. It is a pretty, pretty, pretty crazy video to watch. Um, but a cargo ship uh, seemingly lost power. And ended up running into one of the columns of the bridge as it was trying to cross under the bridge. And it made the bridge collapse. Now, thank God there were not uh, many cars on the bridge at the time. I believe that the crew had signaled to the shore that they were having problems. And that stopped uh, vehicle traffic from uh, crossing over the bridge at the time. Um, and because of that, when the bridge collapsed... Uh, the people that ended up falling into the water were construction workers. And that's still sad and it, it sucks. But again, you can imagine how if this had happened in the middle of the day, okay, like in peak rush hour traffic, something like this happened, this story would be a lot more devastating, okay? I mean, it already is a devastating story because they're searching for people who fell in the water. And again, that is sad in and of itself. My thoughts and prayers go out to the families and I hope that these people are, are found. Um, but with that being said, again, you can imagine how if this had happened, you know, in the middle of the day, instead of at 2 AM, this could have been one of the worst tragedies that we've seen in a long, long, long time. Okay. We're talking about an infrastructure tragedy here that seems to have become commonplace in Biden's America. That's not me blaming Biden at all. That's just me saying that it just so happens that over the past few years or so, we've seen these types of tragedies and they're becoming more and more and more commonplace. Okay. Like for example, when you look at what happened in East Palestine, um, the train derailment, um, you know, these are the types of things that we're seeing a lot in this country. And stories like this uh, just kind of add to uh, the tragedies that are happening when it comes to our infrastructure. So with that being said, uh, I got to react to this clip here from CNN uh, featuring the Baltimore mayor, Brandon Scott, uh, who is going to beg CNN not to play the footage of this tragedy, okay, as he deals with this situation. 
I want to get us to Mayor Brandon Scott, the mayor of Baltimore, uh, who is with us right now on the phone. Mayor Scott, first of all, I just want to say that I am uh, so sorry that your community is going through this right now and that there are families wondering and worrying uh, about their loved ones at this hour. Can you tell me so far what you know about exactly what happened here to the Francis Scott Key Bridge? Well, listen, we we have an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, We know uh, that this vessel struck the bridge and the bridge collapsed. Uh, There were uh, individuals working on the bridge at that time. There are uh, cars in the water. Our fire department has confirmed that as they uh, lead this ongoing search and rescue mission uh, through sonar. Uh, That is where our focus is. It's about those souls and people that we're trying to uh, find and get out of this water. Uh, We know that there's uh, going to be questions about the bridge and traffic and the port. But right now, everyone in this world's focus should be about these souls and those families who are wondering if these people are going to walk back in the door after they walked out to work last night. Yeah, that's a really good point, the, the, the anxiety of, of all this. And then plus just watching the video of what happened and how quickly the bridge failed. Can you give me some sense of what you thought at first light this morning when you saw the pictures of actually what that bridge looks like with the barge uh, slammed into it there, what were your initial thoughts? Well, it was something out of an action movie. It's something you never think you would see. And uh, being here right now looking at it is even more surreal. And it just makes you think about, again, those families, those individuals that were on that bridge, those folks that are even on that, that vessel, even more, because no one should have to endure. And I'm going to be the first to ask that CNN and everyone else stop showing the video. No one needs to see uh, a possibility of their family member being severely injured or otherwise over and over and over again, because it's just traumatizing our community. Fair enough, uh, Mayor. I yeah, so you see, now you heard that, okay? So the mayor is asking CNN not to show the video. Now, I understand where he's coming from, um, but I do think it is important for people to see what happened. I don't necessarily think it's traumatizing to see what happened. I mean, what happened is what happened, okay? Showing the video is not going to change what happened. But clearly and obviously, again, this is a big deal because this is a major port, okay? And with this port being closed, that means you're not going to be able to have shipments come in and out of the port you're also not going to be able to have people cross the bridge i'm pretty sure a ton of people take this bridge to go to work in the morning or to leave work uh it's definitely not going to be good for uh traffic is not going to be good for commerce it is definitely a huge setback for the city of baltimore and some people think that this is a black swan event okay a lot of people are speculating why this happened okay was this some type of cyber attack again i personally think that watching the video um it is extremely kind of suspicious okay um again it could be one of those things where the power went out the ship was moving they couldn't steer the ship um you know they could not stop the ship they could not do what they had to do in time to stop the ship from running into the bridge um i just find it to be again strange okay uh especially considering the times that we're in i mean we just had that um you know terrorist attack in moscow okay um so you know we really don't know i mean there are a lot of crazy things going on in the world and this bridge collapse is one of the latest things that that we're seeing um that you know hey the story here could be a lot deeper than what uh we see on the surface again i don't know my mind is open to many possibilities as to whether or not this was just an accident, it was a freak accident, or was it uh, something more nefarious, okay? Was this some type of cyber attack, or, you know, why was this done? I mean, who knows? I have no clue whatsoever. But the Biden administration has spoke out about this, and um, Biden is basically saying that they're going to try to have this bridge rebuilt and the port reopened as soon as possible, okay? Good thing that they have Pete Buttigieg, uh, the department of transportation secretary on the job because you know he's worried about these roads and bridges potentially being racist on the federal response and what's playing out at the moment carrie what do you know 
Well, something like this requires massive law enforcement coordination. You have the FBI, you have the Coast Guard, you have the police, you have the Transportation Department. And so lots of moving parts, lots of moving pieces. And I was thinking about if this had happened when I was at the Department of Justice and Kaylee, I heard what you said about waking up the president. Would have been the same on my end, waking up the attorney general. And what he would have done would be a couple of things. First, he'd call the FBI director and ask, what do you know? Because, and one of the first questions he'd ask, is there any suspicion of terrorist activity, which we've heard thus far doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, two, foul play. What do we think's going on? Then he would have called the president to brief him. At that point, he, the chief, and I would get on a call, put together a statement to assure the public that the attorney general is monitoring the situation and we're working closely with our local law enforcement partners. But something like this requires, like I said, massive coordination. Yeah, it seems like the Department of Transportation was on it pretty early. Pete Buttigieg in contact with the mayor. We heard the mayor uh, talk about his correspondence with the federal government saying that they were on it. Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice, and we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year. And we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port. And we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, uh, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. And we're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? The Biden administration is on it. Now, that doesn't instill much faith, right? At least not for me. But this is what they say, okay? Um, how much you guys want to bet that there will definitely be a discussion uh, when this bridge is rebuilt about the naming, okay? I'm pretty sure they're going to make a big deal about the bridge being named after Francis uh, Scott Key, okay, who they claim was a racist, and that's one of the reasons why they protest the national anthem. With the spotlight being on this bridge, and the name of the bridge as well, too, uh, how much you want to bet the woke revolutionaries are going to try to have the bridge renamed? Okay, that's probably what they're going to do. But anyways, this seems to be one of the many problems that we're having with our infrastructure and transportation in this country. Uh, we got to talk about Boeing, okay? Because Boeing and their CEO just stepped down uh, after a series of accidents, okay, in which you have planes seemingly falling apart midair. Now, Boeing is stepping down after a whistleblower came out and basically uh, blew the lid off the fact that this company is not really doing what they should do when it comes to quality control. And that's part of the reason why we're seeing a lot of these planes, uh, you know, seemingly falling apart midair, okay, mid-flight. And this whistleblower happens to have been found dead recently. Again, we don't know if he offed himself or was there some type of murder. If I had to guess, he didn't off himself, but... Again, this is what happened, and now you have the CEO of Boeing stepping down. Again, and this is just more of kind of what's happening to this country and our transportation, our infrastructure that seems to be unprecedented. So let's get into it. A major shakeup tonight at Boeing after a string of scary incidents involving the aircraft. The company's CEO announcing today he will step down, and he's not the only leader leaving the aerospace giant. 
CBS's Chris Van Cleve has been asking the tough questions of federal regulators about safety. He tells us how one airline is facing restrictions that could impact your summer travel. Tonight, Boeing on the hunt for a new CEO. Facing mounting scrutiny following a door panel blowing out mid-flight on a recently delivered 737 MAX in January, CEO Dave Calhoun will now depart by year's end. Stan Deal, head of Boeing's commercial airplanes division, is out effective immediately. And a new chairman, Steve Molenkoff, a former Qualcomm CEO. We will get ahead of it. Calhoun says he'll focus on fixing Boeing's production problems before leaving. We have another mountain to climb. Uh, I, let's not avoid what happened with Alaska Air. Let's not avoid the call for action. Let's not avoid the changes that we have to make in our factory. Let's not avoid the need to slow down a bit and let the supply chain catch up. We got to get at that, just like we got at the rest. And we will get through that. Quality control issues were the focus of a recent FAA audit. Of its 89 sections, Boeing failed 33. The company will be meeting with regulators this week about a series of improvement plans. And now the FAA is also increasing oversight of United Airlines after a number of concerning incidents over the last month. The regulator will review company procedures to see if the carrier is effectively managing safety. Do you think this is happening because of what we've seen play out at Boeing this year? I think the FAA is feeling a lot of pressure from Washington, D.C. politicians as well as the public. The sure. FAA may be acting in an overly cautious way, but if they feel this is the prudent decision to make, then so be it. Any FAA action likely comes as a result of the findings of that review. United says it welcomes the scrutiny and safety is its highest priority, Nora. Chris, this is such a big story. I'm sure viewers want to know how will this impact summer travel? Well, the, the timing of when this review is complete means any action the FAA takes could come right as summer travel is ramping up. We understand that they are considering possibly pausing United's ability to add new aircraft or new routes. Nora? Chris Van Cleef, thanks for that. Yeah, so you see that, you heard that, okay? Um, extremely concerning, okay? I mean, we have planes damn near falling out of the sky or at least falling apart. We have bridges collapsing. We have trains derailing. Uh, we got a lot of problems in this country, okay, uh, and this just so happens to be occurring as we have the DEI push. Now, again, I'm not saying DEI has anything to do with what happened with the bridge collapsing or the train derailment, but, you know, when it comes to what's happening with Boeing and United and the FAA, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of these airlines, right, these manufacturers, uh, they are on board with the DEI train, okay? Now, again, I don't know if that necessarily has anything to do with it directly. I'm just saying that amid the DEI push, you're starting to see a lot of things go wrong, okay? And that is leading to a lot of questions from the public in regards to what are we doing, right? Are these companies uh, putting wokeness in the woke agenda over quality? And when you have industries like the airline industry uh, where quality uh, is of the utmost importance because you're talking about people's lives, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a whole lot of scrutiny, right? People are going to ask a whole lot of questions about where are your priorities? Are you prioritizing safety or are you trying to cut corners for profit, right? Or are you, again, uh, hiring people, putting people in positions that should not be in, in these positions? Again, I, I don't know. I'm just saying it's fair to ask questions about what's going on in this country, right? And how we're running things and how we're doing things considering how we're having a lot of these events happening all at one time. I don't think it's a coincidence, but who knows? Maybe it is. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a Black Conservative perspective. Peace.